Hello, my friend. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to spend a few moments with us. I pray that today will be life impacting, life changing for you. I, I pray that God will meet you at the point of your need and things will change today. Take your Bible, if you would, and turn with me to the Gospel of John, the 14th chapter, John chapter 14. And we're going to read verses 25 through 31. Follow along as we read. These things I have spoken to you while being present with you. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give you. So let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. You have heard me say to you, I am going away and coming back to you. And if you loved me, you would rejoice because I said I'm going to my father, for my father is greater than I. And now I have told you before it comes that when it does come to pass, you may believe. I will no longer talk much with you, for the ruler of this world is coming and he has nothing in me. But that the world may know that I love the Father, and as the Father gave me commandment, so I do. Arise, let's go from here. This is a prayer that Jesus prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane on the Thursday night uh, before he would go to the cross on Friday morning. And he was praying for the disciples not to be afraid and not to be troubled in their heart because the events that were about to unfold would definitely unsettle them. It would frighten them. He said, don't be afraid. I'm telling you in advance. So when it comes to pass, you'll know. You'll know what's happening. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Easier said than done, isn't it? I, I want to I wanna talk to you for the next few minutes on how to deal with the fear of what's coming next. The fear of what's coming next. How can we deal with that fear? Keep our hearts settled and unafraid. You know, when it comes to life, wouldn't it be great? Wouldn't it be great if you could order the details of your life kind of like you do in ordering a meal in a restaurant? Uh, something like this. Give me a long and adventurous life. But hold the stress, the sickness, and the teenage drama years. I don't want any of that. Give me an above average salary and a spacious, comfortable home. And ha let me have it in a safe neighborhood. And give me considerate kids who will make sure that I'm taken care of in my golden years. And, and when it's time to leave this place, take me quietly and peacefully in my sleep. Well, that would be something, wouldn't it? If we, could, if we could order our life like we order a meal at a restaurant. But you and I both know life doesn't work that way. Life comes loaded with surprises and, and problems. It doesn't matter how well you plan. Life has surprises and problems that come with it. Your best thought out plans, my friend, often, think about it, often get altered. They get changed and delayed, and even sometimes they get canceled. You know, just when we, we think that our life has settled down and the road ahead looks smooth, something hits our life. Something happens. And, and you know, after a tragedy, you often hear people say something like this, you just never know, do you? You just never know. Well, let's go to where our text is uh, happening in ancient Jerusalem. It's in the upper room. It's at the Passover feast on Thursday night. And on this night, Jesus is celebrating the Passover with his disciples. He's going to make a statement that's going to stun and shock his disciples. It's found in verse uh, 28 of John 14. You have heard me say to you, I am going away going away. Those were the last words the disciples 
ever expected to hear or wanted to hear from Jesus. Imagine how shocked they must have been, how stunned they must have been to hear Jesus say these words because that was going to change everything that they had planned. The statement was made on a Thursday night, right before he would go to the cross on, on, on Friday morning, and the Jesus and his disciples were celebrating the Passover meal together in the midst of a very chaotic week. It had been, since the triumphal entry prior Sunday, it had been a very busy and chaotic week. And now they're drawn aside Thursday evening, celebrating the Passover meal together in a quiet and peaceful manner. And then Jesus makes that statement, I'm going away. And, and that's not what the disciples wanted to hear. I said it a moment ago, it's going to change all of their plans. I mean, the disciples were very optimistic and, and uh, hopeful over what was about to unfold, they, they, at least what they were planning. By all outward appearances, they had good reason to be optimistic. Here's why. Jesus' popularity was growing rapidly. And the opportunity to present Jesus as Israel's new king, the Messiah, they were abundant. In just three short years, in three short years, the crowds were now calling for Jesus to be crowned the king of Israel. And the disciples believed with all their heart that the people would see Jesus as their long-awaited Messiah. They believed that. And it's so much to the point that they started arguing among themselves over who was going to serve in what capacity, what position would they hold in Messiah's new cabinet. And they all envisioned the restoration of Israel to her glory days. And they couldn't wait. They could not wait for Jesus to be crowned king and to overthrow Rome and all foreign oppression. And the sooner, the better. And they saw Jesus as the answer to the nation's prayer. Actually, he was the hope for the common man. They saw that. They believed that. And they felt that everything that they had sacrificed over the last three years was about to be paid back and more. All they had dreamed about was soon to be a reality, at least as they were seeing it. And then... Jesus made that statement, I'm, I'm going away, and it stunned them. It shocked them. And Jesus then added to his announcement an explanation. He said, you know the way that I'm going. You know the way. I'm going to my Father, and you know the way that I'm going. And Thomas, he didn't control his exasperation. He was upset. He was uh, troubled deep within, and he argued back. And he said, no, we don't know the way to where you're going. Jesus was altering, he was modifying and canceling all of their plans, and they didn't like it. And let's be honest, neither do we when it happens to us. No one, no one goes through life without surprises and circumstances that alter and modify and even cancel their plans. Listen, my friend, if you don't like change, and many people don't. If you don't like change, you will have to dwell in the cemetery, for the cemetery is the only place where you won't find any changes. You remember the words of King Solomon back in uh, the Old Testament found in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verses 1 through 8. Listen to this. To everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to harvest what is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones, a time to hold and a time to refrain from holding, a time to gain, and a time to lose, a time to keep, and a time to throw away, a time to tear, and a time to sow, a time to keep silent, and a time to speak, a time to love, 
and a time to hate, a time of war and a time of peace. Ecclesiastes 3, verses 1 through 8. In that passage, Solomon lists 28 different seasons that are common to mankind. 28 different seasons common to mankind. And you know what? God manages life the way he manages his creation. It happens through seasons. Think about it. When it comes to creation, we understand God's management strategy because we've experienced it so much. Nature needs, sea, uh, needs winter to rest and then needs spring to awaken. Nature needs the long, hot days of summer to grow things. And then nature needs the crisp air of fall coupled with the changing colors of the leaves to prepare earth for winter. Earthly seasons, they don't upset us, do they? I mean, we, we ride through the seasons, about the only thing that we're upset about is they happen, they're coming too quickly now, the older we get. Earthly seasons don't upset us. We can deal with that because we can understand the reasoning behind it. But unexpected personal seasons, it throws us. We don't like it. And, and when unexpected things happen, changes happen that we didn't expect to take place, we need someone to calm us down. We need someone to reassure us that we're going to survive this change. You'll remember on the eve of his death, Jesus gave his disciples a great promise, a promise that was wrapped in the introduction of the person of the Holy Spirit. You know, Jesus fully endorsed the Holy Spirit as his representative. He promised the disciples that the Holy Spirit would possess authority and power that was equal to his. He promised his disciples that he would ask his father to send them another counselor, another counselor. I, I want to look at that, that word another. There are two Greek words that are used for the word another. One of them means totally different. Another who is totally different. But the other one means another just like the first. Another just like the first. And that's what Jesus was promising his disciples. He used the second word, that second meaning. He promised another counselor who would be another just like the first, just like him. You know, this promise that Jesus is giving to his saddened and confused and upset disciples, it, it's, it's laced with hope because of the introduction to the Holy Spirit. Listen to what he, let me paraphrase what he said. He said, I'm going away. And you're going to enter into a new season. So much of this new season will be different. But one thing will remain constant, my presence. You will enjoy the presence of another counselor who is just like me. Now, the word counselor is important in this, in this passage. Another counselor. Counselor means several different things throughout Scripture. It can mean a friend. It can mean a helper, an intercessor. And in the Greek language, in the Greek language, the Holy Spirit is referred to as the parakletos. The parakletos. Now, the parakletos is a compound of two Greek words. The word para, which means to come alongside of. And then kletos, which means to be called our designated, assigned, or appointed counselor and companion. Wow. Listen to that again. Means, kletos means to be called our designated, assigned, or appointed counselor and companion. And that's what the Holy Spirit is to us. The Holy Spirit is assigned to come alongside of you. He's assigned to come along. You don't have to beg for his presence. He's assigned to come along beside you and to help you. And he is the very presence of Jesus living within every follower of Christ. The Holy Spirit, he's so misunderstood, but he's so needed in our lives. 
And, and I don't want you to miss this incredible gift that Jesus is giving to his disciples on the eve of his crucifixion. He knows. Oh, he knows their world's about to be turned upside down. He knows it. He knows they're going to see things and witness things and hear things that's absolutely going to devastate them. Devastate them. And it's going to load them up with fear. And he knew that was about to happen. And he wanted them to know that they're never going to face the future without his help. They never will. He's going away, but he's sending another counselor who is just like him, just like Jesus, equal in all aspects. And through his spirit, Jesus is accompanying every believer that follows him. You know, that promise, that promise belongs to us as well. Jesus gives us his spirit to guide us through life. You're not doing life on your own. Or you, you try, and you make mistakes when you try. But, my friend, the Holy Spirit is right there. He's with you. He's indwelling you. He's there assigned to guide you into God's purposes and plans for your life. He didn't give us, Jesus didn't give us a strange spirit. No, he, he gave us the parakletos. He gave us the same spirit. Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the same as Jesus in every aspect. Now, everything that Jesus did with and for his disciples, the Holy Spirit is going to do with and for us. For example, Jesus taught. Well, the Holy Spirit will teach us. Jesus healed, and the Holy Spirit heals us. And Jesus comforted the brokenhearted, and the Holy Spirit is our comforter as well. You know, as Jesus sends you into new seasons, unexpected seasons, unexpected changes, as he allows those new seasons to come into your life, he sends his counselor, he sends the Holy Spirit to go with you into that season and to bring you through it safely. He sends the Holy Spirit to go with you through that season and to bring you through it safely. Think, think about it for a moment. Your journey through life is going to be in the company of the Holy Spirit because he's been assigned to do life with you. John 14 verse 26 and 27 it says, but when the Father sends the Advocate as my representative, that is the Holy Spirit, he will teach you everything and will remind you of everything I have told you. I am leaving you with a gift, peace of mind and heart. And the peace that I give as a gift, the world cannot give. So don't be troubled or afraid. Be honest, all of us, when, new season, when something happens and we find ourselves in a new season that we didn't plan on being in, unexpected, and especially if it's not a pleasant season, we panic. We get upset. We, we feel like we've been abandoned by God. Where is God? And, and the answer is he's right here. He's right beside you. Jesus knew this new season was coming into your life, and he assigned the Holy Spirit to go through it with you and to bring you out of it safely. So for reasons known only to him, those new seasons come into our life. And, and I want you to realize something. Change is a necessary part of God's strategy to change the world. Let me give you some example. Consider how God changed the assignments of the following people to accomplish his purposes in that season. I think of Joseph a spoiled baby brother. But in God's plan, he becomes Egypt's priest. I think of Gideon, a simple farmer, and, and he's, he's afraid, he's, he's young, and yet he becomes a military leader. I think of Esther, a teenage orphan, and she ends up becoming Persia's queen. David, he, a young teenage shepherd 
out on the hillside of Judea, and he becomes Israel's greatest king. I think of Mary, a virgin peasant teenager, and she becomes Messiah's mother. That was a season she didn't plan for. Matthew, he was a despised tax collector, and, then, and he became a beloved disciple. I think of Peter, a local fisherman, and he became one of the leaders of the first New Testament church. And then John, another fisherman, he became the author of the book of Revelation, the revelation of Jesus Christ. And then Paul, I think of Paul, a dangerous rabbi, dangerous. And God brought a season to where he became a world evangelist and the author of most of the New Testament. So change is a necessary part of God's strategy to impact and change the world. Everyone that I just listed to you and told you what they became, those were new seasons. They didn't plan on those. David wasn't sitting out on the hillside and saying, I'm going to be the next greatest king of Israel. He didn't think that at all. But God brought a new season, and it, it ended up bringing change to David. This young teenage shepherd becomes Israel's greatest king. My friend, for reasons known only to God, he allows us to enter new seasons in our life, and sometimes those new seasons bring tragic circumstance and changes to our life. Sometimes they do. And some seasons we experience make no sense to us at all. This doesn't make any sense. What I'm going through, what I'm experiencing, it doesn't make any sense. There's no precedent for it in my life or in my family. But if you look at that circumstance, that season, through God's perspective, it does make sense. What makes no sense in this life, now listen to this, don't miss this, what makes no sense in this life will make perfect sense in the next life. What we don't understand here will understand in our next life, next. And the proof of this is seen in the time that you spent in your mother's womb. In your mother's womb. Think of it. Every day in the womb was equipping you for life on earth. Everything that's happening to you in the womb was preparing you for your next season on earth. Your bones solidified in order to support your body's frame. Your eyes developed so that you could see. Your nose developed so that one day you would be able to breathe earth's air. Just like, just like the seasons change, just like it is in the womb of your mother, you're being prepared for the next life. You know, in many ways, in many ways, our life here on earth is like life in the womb. Not everything that happens to us makes sense. Just like it didn't make any sense in the womb. Not everything that happens to us <clears throat> makes sense at the time. But by faith, by faith, we know that we are being prepared for our eternal life to come. Listen to what the Apostle Paul wrote to the Corinthian church, 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 17. These little troubles are getting us ready for an eternal glory that will make all our troubles seem like nothing. Wow. Let me read that again. That's very, very powerful. 2 Corinthians 4 verse 17. These little troubles are getting us ready for an eternal glory that will make all our troubles seem like nothing. My friend, you may have planned your life to be different than it has become. I know when I was a young teenager, I was already mapping my life out and um, I wanted to be a high school teacher of history. I wanted to be a basketball coach. 
and I mean, I was planning toward it. I, I knew where I was going to go to college, to what coach I was going to study under. I was in, I was absolutely captured by world history. I was reading and reading and reading and learning. And then at age 14, God changed the season for me. He changed the season, and I ran from him for two long years. When I was 16, I surrendered to my change, to my new season. I became a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I didn't plan to be. Matter of fact, I didn't want to be. But God saw, and he brought that season into my life, and everything changed. And you know what? I look back over the events of my life, some very pleasant and some way not very pleasant. But I wouldn't change my journey for anything because I know I'm walking in the season that God has appointed for me. My friend, the Bible teaches that God has a plan for our lives. And it's a good plan. It'll fill our life with hope and our future with hope. But in order for that plan to unfold and be realized, there are times when we'll have to walk through new seasons. Everything that happens to us in this life is preparing us for what's coming next, our eternal life in heaven. And it'll season us and give us a resource to do what he's calling us to do here in this life. So what I'm trying to say is don't lose your confidence in God when change comes, even when it's a very unpleasant change. Don't, don't walk away. Don't lose your confidence in God. You may not see him, you may not feel him, but it doesn't mean he's absent. The Holy Spirit is right there with you. Whatever you're going through today, right now, the Holy Spirit is beside you. He's beside you. And he is sent to be with you no matter what and to walk you through every season that comes into your life and to bring you through it safely. His job is to present you before God the Father at the end of your life, to present you before God the Father as one who kept their confidence in him. Wow. Let me pray for you. My Father, I come to you in Jesus' name, and I bring my friends with me. And Lord, we're going to own it right up front. Not one of us like change. <laughs> Don't like it. We get comfortable in things like they are now. And then out of nowhere comes something happens and change. We don't like it. But I pray that each one of us, myself included, when a new season comes, that we will walk through it with the confidence knowing the Holy Spirit is beside us. Holy Spirit, I thank you. Oh, I thank you for being with us. Whether I feel you not or can sense your presence or not, discern your presence, you're there because you were assigned to be there. And I thank you. I thank you for it. My father, some of my friends today, they're struggling. A new season has come out of nowhere. And it's impacted their life and some in not such a very good way. And they're suffering. But you're right there with them. And I ask you today, my Father, in Jesus' name, to heal them. Touch them at the point of their need. Make a difference in their life. Draw them to you. Let them sense the nearness of your presence. I thank you for doing this. I thank you for listening to my prayer. And I thank you for the promise. You're going to answer this prayer. You said you would. You said you would. So I offer you my prayer in the name that's above them all, the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. God bless you, my friend. Thank you for listening to this week's message. 
To stay up to date, please like us on Facebook at Touching Africa Ministries or visit our website at touchingafricaministries.org. If you would like to give online, head to touchingafricaministries.org slash donate.